the past couple of weeks, I've had some quiet days in what is normally a pretty round Monday to Friday work life. Now, I'm a man of many to-do lists, work-wise and real life-wise, and they only ever seem to grow longer. So you'd think I'd use this time to tackle some of them, but as so often in my freelance life, I immediately felt that I should be working guilt. I've had my time off this year too, and I've already got my eyes on my next chunk of time off for next year. I couldn't justify more leisure time. I figured I should probably use the time productively and set out to make some spec work. It's that time again. Time to get your hands filthy. Slice it up. Mix it up. Slip it up. Oh, what a mess you've made. But it'll all be worth it, right? Mm, maybe not. Should have got a takeaway. It's been some time since I've done a self-initiated passion project, but every time that I have done, it's paid off in dividends in some way or another further down the line. Got me in with a new production company, led me to meet a beneficial new contact, or prompted someone I already knew to take notice of my work, ultimately leading to more work, but generally slightly better work, slightly bigger work, career progression work. And I really hope that this has the same effect, but if it doesn't, that's totally fine because I've also uploaded all of these rushes to Film Supply, so perhaps it'll pay off there. If you'd like to license any of this footage for your own project, then do head to the link in the description below. I landed on a food spec for a few reasons. First off, I've had a few food jobs in the past 12 months, so I thought maybe this is a niche I should look to get more work in. Secondly, I figured there's a number of different things that I could show within this niche. A slight comedic approach in the performance, stylistic camera work, visual effects, and some of your standard slow motion and pro bleeding food porn. Thirdly, I'd be working within the confines of the resources that I already have at my disposal. I'd write something that could be shot in my house, using my own kit, and where I'd only need to spend money on a few props, talent for a day, perhaps a voiceover artist, and the final grade. The biggest cost to me here would be my time, of which I had to spare on account of my fairly spacious work calendar. I started out with an idea motivated by my restrictions. I don't have any existing relationships strong enough with any food stylists that I figured I could ask anyone for free or even cheap work on this project. So I thought, why not lead into the food looking terrible rather than unbelievably perfect? I opened a series of note-taking resources and planning solutions, writing the title Should Have Got a Takeaway, along with the most basic of VO scripts for me to plan my visuals around. Whilst I didn't perhaps go to town in imagery and detail the same way I would have done for a client project, I still started with putting together a treatment, something that I could anchor my thoughts around. I ripped some of my favourite food ads off of YouTube and studied them, pilfering ideas that I could make my own. I wasn't trying to reinvent any wheels here, just show people some of the things I can do. I headed to the free version of Milanote to plot out my shots and make sense of what I would need so I could determine a bit of a shooting order, what grip I'd use and when I need the talent. I then had a thought to reach out to my talented friend and often gaffer, Charlie Ralph, to see on the off chance he had some free days in his schedule if he fancied getting involved. Charlie's not just a great gaffer but has a great eye for detail and just getting stuck in wherever, so I figured it couldn't hurt to try asking, and what would you know, he had some quiet days too, and was DTF. Down to film. We could shoot into this corner, but taking off the TV off the wall and stuff is a pain in the ass. But my thought was um, to shoot into this corner. That being kind of like our widest and our, like, we're never gonna be very wide. Put this on its axis. I was thinking about dressing this corner so it's got some like practical looking thing in the corner with books and shit. Taking this off the wall, color backdrop there and some things in front of it to give it some depth. Could paint this, love not to, but could paint it. I then spent way too long transforming my living room with some spare paint into something more filmogenic. I placed a large-ish Amazon order of props I didn't already have, some of which I'd try and return if unused, and some of which I'd absorb into my everyday kitchen life after the shoot. I spoke to my Welsh friend Dylan about borrowing his probe lens. I then went to pick up more paint because I fell short with the spare. I headed to Ikea to pick up the cheapest available wood effect countertop I could find, but definitely not the lightest. And lastly, I headed to Mandy.com to look for a cast member that was shorter than six foot to work within the space that we had. I was keen to shoot a load of super low and wide, so in vogue right now, shots for this spec where it made sense to, as well as making sure that the talent had hands as pale as mine in case I needed to do any pickup shots after. And I ideally came with an interesting look. I landed on another Charlie. I don't think that I've ever shot something quite so calculated before when shooting for spec. 
So something I definitely wasn't prepared for was just how indecisive I'd be without having paid work hours and a client standing behind a monitor. I kept second guessing my choices. How can we do this better? Is the art direction good enough? It's one thing casting my own opinion over someone else's work as an art director, for example. But when you're thinking about the lighting, the camera movement, the performance, the look of the food, the technicalities of the visual effects elements, and then judging the art direction I'd done myself, that was tough. Having Charlie Ralph there for the talent day was a relief, not only to have his talent and help, but to have someone whose opinion I respect in the creative world's input. Someone who I could outrightly say to, I think this is good enough, but what do you think? Do you think it can be better? Am I overthinking things here? I have cut Charlie in on a royalty split of the film supply footage, by the way, just so everything's entirely transparent here. Although I'm sure if it was the right project at the right time, Charlie is enthusiastic enough about creating great work that he would have been down anyway, as long as that didn't mean him missing out on paid work to do it. When shooting on my own in the days following, for the reasons mentioned, everything took longer. And then when a last minute commercial pay level shoot popped up with designer Paul Smith, I had to pack everything away and hit pause on what should have been my last half day or so of filming for this. only to then pick it up another week later when I had another down day. It's not great living in the clutter of a shoot in your own home for any amount of time, especially when that has involved painting and now resetting it to how it looked before the shoot when it was once my living space. But I'm really pleased with what we achieved and I think it was probably worth the hassle, although that remains to be known. I know I don't really talk about cinematography on this channel. It's semi-intentional because there are so many great resources elsewhere on the internet to learn about this, but I'm gonna do it just quickly on this occasion. The intention on this shoot and many slash most shoots was to create shape and interest where possible with the lighting. We've achieved this in a few ways. Creating contrast, leaning towards a heavier, moodier ratio. The main key light was Charlie's Arri S60 sky panel. We used shadows to create shapes both on the background and in the foreground using a hard backlight. In this instance, mostly the Aperture 1200D on a mostly very low setting except for the high speed stuff. We also used a gobo, an object that you place either inside or in front of a light source in order to control the shape of the emitted light to cast some interesting tree shaped patterns here on one of the back walls. Also used a practical light alongside using reflective dressing that was very subtly lit from behind those books with a little aperture MC. If I'd had a bigger space to work within, I definitely have added even more practicals to create more depth. Haze was used to add a bit more visibility to the light, giving it a bit more drama throughout. A big focus on the shoot for me was to keep the camera work interesting, using our somewhat limited grip equipment to do more controlled moves, like these dollies in, a camera whip down, motivated by our actor's look, and some point of view action shots. Oh, no. For all the VFX work that you can see here, it was as simple as shooting a clean plate without the food in and then filming the food in a similarly lit environment on blue screen so I could key it out later and then puzzle it all together in After Effects. I added some layers of pre-keyed smoke to give the food some heat as well as adding some camera shake for when it impacted. This shot in particular was inspired by a video I saw by the talented Daniel Schiffer combined with this Ritz advert created by my friends at Food Hall Productions here in the UK. I made some bodged together rigs for the POV shots, which I'm gonna go into more detail in in a future video that I'll link here and in the description below, as someone's been asking how I do some of my camera rigging. The post took a bit of time. Again, squeezed in around a return to a less free work calendar. Still second guessing myself and not having the confines of paid work time brought a lot of indecisiveness to the process that I don't normally experience on a paid job. I then paid for a favor grade from Cam via Susie at DMC, the lovely people also responsible for the beautiful grade in my last video, and have just today sat down to fire this off to all the people I've either worked with before or hope to work with in the future. Most of them will inevitably ignore it or just not have the time in their busy work schedule to take it in, but some won't, and fingers crossed, at some point in the future, something will come from it. Time was my greatest expense here, and I'm in the incredibly privileged position of being over a decade deep into my career and not only owning my own space to film in, but also owning a lot of my own gear. But don't let that stop you from making your own passion project or spec piece. This holiday video I shot with my ex-girlfriend with just the one lens on my A7S II six or seven years ago now, consequently led on to me landing my first six-figure commercial directing job. And anyone with a smartphone can do the same now. How much did this actually cost me to make though? outside of owning my own kit and having Charlie Ralph's help. 
I spent £200 on props, £5.50 on paintbrushes, £70 on a kitchen surface, £35 on more paint, £150 on an actor, £40-ish on ingredients, a lot of which found its way into various soups afterwards, £32 feeding the Charlies, £100 for an actor to re-record my voiceover, and £150 on a tasty grade for the reel. The probe lens that I borrowed from my Welsh friend Dylan, well, that should have saved me around £100 in rental money, but I had to go and collect it. And who knew that you had to pay congestion charge here in London on a Sunday? So it ended up costing me £80 in fines alone, as well as the fuel and three hours worth of time to collect and return it. I should have just rented it. So that brings us to a total of £862.50. Hopefully a future worthwhile investment. I hope this has maybe been of some inspiration to you to set out to create your own spec work or passion projects. You definitely don't need to look at it as an ad, but I think making something bite-sized and easy for others to digest is always gonna be beneficial in getting more eyes on it. You should watch this video next to learn how I use spec projects to go from a day rate of 450 to upwards of 1300. And if you still haven't, make sure to, make sure to subscribe for more semi-helpful tips and interesting insider industry knowledge.